All right. So this is a cartoon which I made for you guys, for you to understand the idea of an isomer. So if we go uh, back to our lecture notes, obviously you have a definition of isomer. You can do Control F in our lecture notes in the PDF. Control F and type isomer. Um, here we have the definition of an isomer. And as you can see, this definition encompasses, you know, the, 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 this formula here. This is the, the lifetime, and this is the uh, lambda of the spin, the, that's the spin, and this is the energy of the gamma ray. So this is an exponential formula. And the smaller the energy, obviously, the, 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 the lifetime will be bigger. And the uh, because is 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 a uh, is to the minus two lambda plus one, right? So the smaller the energy, the bigger, the longer is the is the lifetime, and also it will depend on the uh, multipolarity on the spin of the transition. So the most in impressive example of this isomers, these long leaf nuclear states, are. Uh, the K isomers, and this happens because of the, of the following. So yesterday we were saying that a nucleus, actually let's write the nucleus, let's be artistic today. We have a nucleus and the nucleus has a particular, let me go here, a particular shape, particular color, let's say, right? particular color, so it has a quadruple shape, right? And then we go here and we have two particles. Generally, this guy will rotate in the ground state. We always say kappa is equal to zero. And this is a result of having uh, the angular momentum, the total angular momentum pointing upward, right? This would be J. And the nucleus will rotate like this, right? And in such a way that you know this the whole nucleus acts as a whole, and this is the, the symmetry axis here, right? And the symmetry axis set, the projection of J onto set is zero, right? So for this particular case, K is equal to zero the projection of the total angular momentum. And this is typically the situation for the ground state band. You know, the, the rotational band uh, works like this and goes in units of two. So they are all coupled by electric quadruple operator. These are all E2 transitions. And this is what the nucleus does. And this is what we, we study ourselves uh, a while ago <clears throat> for uh, when we studied the Hamiltonian, which was proportional to L, or actually to J, Jx squared plus Jy squared. This is was the energy for, with some factors here, and this was a proportional to uh, J squared minus Jz squared, right? So once this is, we use this in, in classical mechanics, this was the energy of a, of a rigid rotor uh, for a rigid rotor, right? And using the formula from classical mechanics, this is what we did at the beginning of this course, we managed to quantize that formula and come to this, uh, this equation here, yeah, right? The, the question of E depending on J h bar square over two times the moment of inertia, j, uh, j plus one minus k square. Actually, we drop k square that time because for the ground state band, k is equal to zero, right? So as you know, all these guys will have a wave function. Row zero, let's say row one, row two, uh, row three, right? Row four because that's the, that's the situation. And this will be connected by electric quadrupole operators. So the six plus will be connected 
overlap of the wave function. This will represent the overlap of the wave function between an E2 operator and the four plus, and this will represent the transition probability. Basically, how uh, the nucleus decays to the other level, from the six plus to the four plus, right? And this, sometimes we call it the, the, the square root, the square uh, of this, we call it the P2 value, which is basically the square of that, we call it matrix element. So this is a matrix element, four plus to six plus is the decay from here to here. It is basically telling us about the overlap between these two wave functions. Overlap of the two wave functions. So if this value is very large, that means that this wave function looks very similar to this one. In the sense of, you know, the two wave functions may look similar, right? So then this guy decays to this guy very fast, right? And as I said, this is the ground state. And for the ground state, you have J and kappa, or I mean kappa, K quantum number is equal to zero. Now let's go to the Nielsen diagram. And we are going to uh, explore here. Let's go to somewhere. Uh, let's go here for instance. Make this big. And uh, we want, this is for, uh, for neutron, that's perfect. So uh, imagine we have the, the, the following situation. But yesterday I mentioned the case of uh, xenon 128, right? Or Hafni 178. So this is the situation for, uh, for the ground state band. Everything is rotating as a whole. But now what happens? as Luasic asked yesterday, what happens, what happens for, um, for even, even nuclei, right? For odd, odd nuclei is clear, the odd particle will characterize the spin and the excitations, the first excitations at least, but for even, even nuclei, we need to understand a little bit better. And then we're going to have pairs in all these Nilsson orbits, and as we mentioned yesterday, we need to break a pair. And the easiest one will be the one which is farther away from a magic number. So no, now we, uh, uh, we go one step forward here and we study the case of 128 xenon. An example which has 54 protons and 74 neutrons, right? So if we have the protons here and the neutrons here, first thing we look at here is closer to 50, right? Protons and these the neutrons are, the next one is 82, which is farther away. Still we have eight to go, but only four to go here. So most likely we're going to first thing, the most, uh, the easiest thing is to break a pair of neutrons, right? So let's go and add to 74 in the Nielsen diagram. So let's change, uh, yeah, let's go here. Uh, here we go. Uh, let's make a, a vertical line always. We make a vertical line. Let's minimize this so we can drive, um, draw a nice vertical line. Uh, we go here. And we're going to draw a vertical line somewhere which doesn't bother us too much. Let's say here, from point two, let's say from point two. Okay, and this vertical line, we're going to be right there. Perfect. Now we're going to zoom in. We're going to, we are assuming that the deformation, the quadruple deformation of Zeno 128 is uh, is uh, prolate and it has a an epsilon two or a beta or depends the, the diagram is, is is labeled in using different coordinates different parameters but let's see epsilon two is equal to point two so as we mentioned yesterday we go up 
in uh, let's make thing, things a little bit simpler let's move it here somewhere a little bit down here on this side so we just start from 50 here right so now we are going to go into detail and we're going to say okay i want i want i want to move this guy down i want to make a, a little plot there and let's make this guy a different color today uh, not that one this one all right so we have the 50 here one control c control v and this is the deformation right so they must follow the orbit so we have two there that makes 50. okay guys you're following me ah siola has raised a hand siola what do you want oh, sorry prof so do you give us the coordinates whereby you will draw the line you would draw the line yourself. I give you a, 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 the, the quadruple deformation and you draw the line yourself. Oh, okay. Or, you know, you just draw the line. You just, uh, you take the initiative and you, you do it yourself also. You take first, you must understand that most nuclei are supposed to be prolate. So you can always make a line on the prolate and be almost uh, certain that it's going to be prolate. But, you know, there, there are many, uh, many cases where, where nuclei are also oblate. So, but if I don't say anything, you assume whatever you want. You need to, we need, we need to have the independence here, right? So, but if I, normally I will say what is the quadruple deformation and then we keep going. And we say 50, 50 is here, right? This is the 50. Then we say, okay, 50, uh, 51, you know, 52. 53 and remember that these are all uh, uh, positive parity because they are solid lines 50 52 54 oh that's why it's not going to do that so then we keep going Fifty five. Fifty six. 57, 58. Here we have a bunch. Okay, so let's not get confused. Let's put one here first in the dashed line. Negative parity. And then let's put up, oh, uh, let's put it here. And let's put another two here and this one. Remember this, this guy also here, which is very close. So also that must be two there in this five half four one three, right? So we go two here and two there. So 50, 52, 54, 56, 58, 60, 62. And then we go to this other one here, 62. 63, right? 64 is one takes two because remember is the orientation following the the, uh, the right hand rule who so, is well yeah um i don't think i'm following like uh, properly what you're doing are you doing the possible excitations like the i'm filling up the building of oh okay well, With the we are filling up the building have. so what we are doing right now is to fill up the number of particles right so we are saying okay. we are going to go to 74 neutrons, right? Okay. But this is where we have to go to 50 to 74. So I'm counting up to 74 to see where we are in the in the building, right? Basically, okay. I just counting up, and the best thing is to count from 50 here because it's, it's a big gap. So 50, okay. 52, 54, 56, 58. Uh, this guy is uh, these two guys here, 60. 62, 64, uh, we're almost there. And then these also guys come together, 50, there are three together here, so 50. So how much, how much do we put on the solid line and the dash line? Always two, always two. Oh, okay, okay. Always two. Always two because as I say, is I'm going to explain that. Let's put these things here. 
And so we know uh, one here, because here there are three of them, right? Coming sure. together. So it's one, two, and three. Okay, and now uh, how many we have? Two, 54, 56, 58, 60, 62, 64, 66, 68, 70, right? Mm -hmm. 72. And, uh, Sorry, bro. Yeah. yeah. I can see that you are saying you have uh, 72, but uh, you added uh, 14. How do you count? So I'm telling you that each of these guys has, has two, right? Yes. So you can count, so you, can, what, you can count two. Where do you start counting? I'm telling you, I'm counting from the 50 here. This is 50. So this is 50. Two particles here, 50, right? So okay. the next the next line is 52. The next line is 54. Oh, okay. The next line is 56. The next line is 58. The next line here is uh, 60. The next line there is 62. The next line there is 64. The next line here is 60, uh, 66. The next line here is 68. This line is 70. You know, 72 and 74. We have reached the point where we are. Either we are here on this line or we are on this line. It depends where we move. So we put the line in, in, in the middle almost, but uh, you know, it can go either way. We can move it here. And then the last two particles will be on this guy here, right? Basically, uh, yeah. You see what I mean? I'm just, it will be easier to see. So each one has two, right? And it has two because what we say yesterday, it has two because in our, in our orientation, right? Each one has two possible orientations, which are, you know, if we have, uh, let's say seven half, seven half here, right? This guy here is seven half. Uh, so we will have seven half uh, going this way. And we have a, our prolate nucleus, right? So we will have seven half moving up in this trajectory, right? And that will be uh, J seven half. Actually, let's see what the, what is the J because this is the, this is a so yeah this seven half comes here from this J seven half so the J will be seven half for this particular orbit here and M J will be seven half so basically it will be J seven half and M J seven half the projection is what really is telling us this number here. Right? So this number here, guys, this is the projection. This number that I'm, I'm blinking here, this seven half is the projection of this J seven half, right? So that projection is telling us how the nucleus actually rotates around the nucleus, right? If we have the nucleus, uh, the particle going the other way around, the particle goes this way, Right. Then we have an angular momentum here of the same J seven half and MJ equal a minus seven half, right? So this is the two particles J seven half and MJ seven half here, the two particles which are in one in each of the orbits in the Nielsen diagram, right? So we can only have two. The seven half comes with two. The one pointing going up in this direction, moving in this direction, and the other one moving in the other direction. Right? Is that clear? Is that clear? Yeah, I so that's, think why, it is. that's why each of these orbits has only two particles. The, the one half the same, the five half the same will be 
either rotating this way or rotating, or rotating the other way, right? And the orientation will be different. That's the only thing that will change. Remember that for this seven half, we will have also um, the other possibilities, which will be the uh, other guys here, right? The same J's, the same J's, but this will be MJ uh, five half, MJ uh, three half, uh, MJ one half, right? And all of these, obviously, they will rotate in a different way, right? Is that clear? Saola? Is that clear or not? Uh, for you, I think I got lost uh, somewhere. But then uh, you need to watch the video and, and go back because uh, the explanation is, is, is very clear. All these guys, they have two particles because there's one orientation going this way and the other orientation going the other way. The same thing here, you know, for, for the five half and for the seven half, for the three half, for the one half, say for the one half, we have a particle going that way, the MJ one half, and this will be the orientation of that particle around the nucleus, right? This will be the nucleus. And uh, the orientation of the particle will be going that way. But also we have the other possibility, right? Uh, we have the particle uh, orbiting this way. And the same thing happened, right? So this one goes, uh, the particle goes orbiting this way. This particle goes orbiting this way. Both of them. They have MJ in this case will be, uh, actually, let me see, yeah, oh, this will be going, going down there. But then the, this, is, this is going to give us the, the recent projection, right? It will be going this way down, but obviously the projection must come here as negative, right? This projection comes there as positive. So this is not the, the right way, it was this way. So this will be MJ equal minus one half. So obviously these projections will give us here the, the five half, the three half, and the and the one half, and the other ones, the other particles, you know, the other orientation will give, will give the minus one half, the minus three half, or minus five half, and the uh, and the seven half. So it's basically the way particles rotate around. So we discussed this yesterday. So you have to watch the, the the video from yesterday and and see what is happening today. So now let's go and keep going because uh, we cannot uh, deviate too much from the uh, idea that I want to explain today. So, so now here we are in a situation where we have fill up all the way up to 74, right? So we have gone from 50, is the easiest way to go from 50 because there's a big gap here. This is this guys are 50. So for 50, let me see. Uh, all these guys are 50. Oh, let me see. Let me just see what everything. Uh, let's see what this is. I want to see what the. Uh, no, it doesn't work that way. This one. I want to do this one. So, all these guys, you see. Uh, can I draw a curly thing here? So basically, just follow follow the the, the 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 cursor here, and you will see that all this is fifty. I don't know why I gonna draw this thing. Uh, let me see what I can draw. I thought that we, ah here we go. Why is that now? No, oh, it doesn't allow me. For whatever reason, but just look at this. Uh, can you see, Luasi? Here, follow the, cur the, the, the cursor, and you will see that all this is 50. Actually, you go back down here, go back down there. All this is 50. I moved this line here because it was, it was easier. What is happening? I think I, 
like this zoom thing that again gets stuck here. Mm. That was not. So, somehow we had lost control of this page. Uh, let me see if I can recover it. Uh -huh. Okay, saving the document. All right, now. So, if we do this, should we move? Or? What is happening? Anyway, uh, let's try to uh, let's. Try, I'm going to close this thing because it's just. Uh, and the way to close this thing when things get crazy. PS minus U and Jane Orsay, kill minus nine. Uh, what is this? Even here, here we go. S office kill. All right, we kill it, and then we have to go back and open it again. But now you know uh, what we have to do documents, uh, lecturing. Uh, here we go. Actually, they are in documents, the mission dynamics here. Open with this guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we are. And um, we, as uh, before we did, we just drew a line. I was on this one here, on this one in particular. We drew a line somewhere uh, around here. Right? And we say, okay, this line, uh, I'm going to make it bigger. Right? So we count it up from 50 up. And the two particles remaining to, to count to 74 were right there. So this is now. What is happening? I don't know. What is this guy now? Anyway, this uh, this guy doesn't want to work today. This uh, nonsense guy. So let's close it here. Run safe. And let's open it one more time. 
the Nilsson is right here. Nilsson, open it with another application so we can draw. Let's see, hopefully it now comes. Mm -mm. We have to close it. Okay, let's try. Now we will close everything. Uh, For whatever reason, this guy doesn't want to come. I see, I see, look. It's the little thing there, you see. Hi, man, 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 man. Okay. So much of nonsense. Now let's go back again to the line around here. And we go all the way up there. Make a nice vertical line, change the color so it's just easier for us to, to identify. <clears throat> and then we zoom in. Uh, okay, we have zooming and then we count it up to 74 because we are doing it for neon 20. Uh, what is it now? Here we go for Sino 128. And uh, we counted that the particles will be somewhere uh, here, actually. So somewhere here. Uh, let's say we move this a little bit. So this will be the 74th particles you just have to add in twos so uh now this is in the seven half 404 forget about this 404 now these are the numbers of the of the harmonic oscillator the main quantum number this is the number of nodes and this is actually the projection of uh of l but these are things that we don't really need to know for this exercise so uh we have two particles on this seven half 404 and if we look at the at the NDC, we uh, we see. Let me see where we are now. Here we are. Perfect. So we look at the NDC, and uh, we see that Sino one twenty eight. Are you following me, guys? And in are you there? Are you watching? Sorry about that. It's just um, this computer didn't want to work. So if we go to 128 Sino, let's go back to the action. Uh, so we are going to select all these guys. We're going to make a PDF. Uh, we're going to put it in texturing. Okay, structure. And uh, we're going to call it 128 Sino. And DC. All right, we're going to open this, this fellow. And the first thing we realize is that you have a zero plus, two plus, you know, ground state, nice. But suddenly, you know, these lifetimes are picoseconds, 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 10 to the minus uh, 12. But then suddenly uh, we have these guys. Uh, when was this this uh, evaluation done? Last time was done in 2012. So then we should have a. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let 
this guy. You see, this eight minus guy. This eight minus guy has is living 83 nanoseconds. So this is quite long for a nuclear lifetime. And this 83 nanoseconds, actually, um, it is uh, it is what we call an isomer from some nanoseconds or and longer. These states are called isomers, and then they represent a big change in structure. So uh, this is what happens in the following situation. When we have this situation of J and K equal to zero, then suddenly you break a, a pair of particles uh, where we are breaking the pairs are here. And this guy, you break a pair and this guy will be promoted somewhere there. And then suddenly you have the two particles doing something else. They're not now part of the of the of the core, part of the nuclear core. But now these two guys are orbiting around uh, in the following way. So now you have a nucleus, uh, which looks like this. This is the symmetry axis. And these guys actually they broke from the core and they're orbiting around. And there's another particle which also broke from the core and is also orbiting around, right? So these guys inside, they have all the particles are coupled to J equal to zero. And the nucleus started, remember, it was like this, where the total J was pointing up for the ground state. But now suddenly these two guys are going to, to have two, uh, two different J's, right? But the total J will be pointing up there because now they are, they are moving and they're rotating around the core. And now we will have a projection K, right? So now these guys have changed the structure of the nucleus. Now what we see before that the, the nucleus was rotating and we have very similar wave functions. Now we don't have the same similar wave functions because we have moved for the nucleus not doing the same thing, right? So before the nucleus was rotating as a whole, right? And it was moving the same wave function, the same wave function. And then suddenly we break a, a couple of pairs. So the angular momentum changed quite drastically, changed from here, right? Which was there before, changed to being actually pointing on the set direction, set axis, right? So then actually this is the, now the projection of J onto set is, is, is large. And this is where the nucleus has a, totally different wave function because now the nucleus is, is controlled by these two particles which are moving around, orbiting around the nucleus, whereas here the nucleus was orbiting as a whole, right? So obviously this wave function is going to be different to this one here. And now this decay is going to be small because now the nucleus is pointing like this and before it was pointing like that. So for these to to decay here, right? This must change. This thing must change to this thing, right? So this sudden change of uh, J, you know, pointing the total angular momentum, pointing along the set axis, and here, which was perpendicular to the set axis, that big change in angular momentum obviously has a change in the in the wave function with respect to this now initial, and to go to the final is going to be an issue, right? And this is the, 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 in gross mode, is what we see in the story of uh, what I want to show you here on Winnie the Pooh and how the isomer changed, right? So Winnie the Pooh, the story, uh, here we go here. You know, the, he entered the hole very nicely. The, the hole was the same shape of, of Winnie the Pooh, right? But he ate a lot of honey and he became fat. So the initial wave function here changed completely to the final wave function. So in this case, he ate a lot and is this situation where the two particles breaking within the core, within the nuclear core, we have two particles being broken and then the situation has changed. The wave function, the the, the wave function has wave function changed dramatically. 
in a way. Me, Tell me. Um, I I heard something about the person like who ate a lot of honey and became fat between um those cartoons. Yeah. You know, repeat that step again. Sorry, say that again. Say that again. <laughs> Man. <laughs> what what are you saying? I didn't I didn't understand. What happened? Did you have a problem with this guy eating too much? No, you were making a practical example of what you are saying. So I'm actually asking you to repeat that about the hand. Of course, thing. of course. Look, so uh, I don't have a boy egg. You know, uh, normally, mm, normally I have I have something here for you guys. If I can find it, here we go. This thing. Now the problem is to make it uh, to make the sample for you guys. So, can you see this thing, right? Can you see this? Yes, prof. I think it does. Can you see this uh, this thing I have in my hand? Yes, sir. So this thing, right. if I rotate it like this, you know, it's, just a, it's a little bit broken, but if I rotate it like this, see, it will change orientation, right? The problem is that this thing is, is broken here. Uh, but let's try to stick it there, the stronger we come. And then try it again. You see, the nucleus at the beginning in the ground state was uh, was rotating like this. And then eventually, if we do it right, the thing is that maybe this surface is too, is too flat. I mean, too smooth, and it cannot, it cannot bring up. But you know this, this gyroscope from the, from, the, from the school, right? This is supposed to rotate like this. And then eventually it will turn. It will turn the rotation and, and rotate like this, right? So the same thing happened with a boy leg. Oh, almost there. With a boy leg, uh, the, same, prof, the same situation will happen. Tell me. Can you please uh, maximize the screen? So let me. Um, the thing is, I cannot, I cannot maximize anything. I just what you see on the screen. Can you see now? I can put it closer. OK. Yes, yes. So this thing, remember, this thing is rotating like this. It will change rotation and start rotating this. The thing is, this surface is very, very smooth. Let's see whether we can do it. Let's see. Also, it must be like there's nothing in the middle. <laughs> so let me see now. We have to go back to our childhood. Here we go. Uh, you see, almost there. So basically, this guy will start rotating, will change orientation, and will start doing something entirely different. So this is uh, this is what happening with the nucleus. The nucleus is rotating, and I'm going to show you here. It's rotating like this uh, as a whole in the ground state. It's rotating like this, right? And then suddenly. You have, you have broken two pairs, you break the pairs, and this pair of particles of proton or neutrons, they are rotating around the nucleus like this, right? So then the total angular momentum is shifted by the, the combination of the particles rotating and the core that we have before, but the total angular momentum is moving now along this axis before it was here, right? And now we have a projection. But this change, this change in, 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 in angular momentum in the k quantum number, k was equal to zero here, and now k is equal to j here, right? So to move back from here to here, because eventually, remember, a nucleus wants to de-excite, de-excite and go back to the 
to the state of uh, minimum energy, you know, the ground state here. Everyone wants to go back to the ground state, right? So for, for going back to the ground state, this J here must go to this J here. So this takes time. You know, this is why the, the, these guys live so long because, uh, and that's why it's, they are called K isomers, right? K isomers because the change, there's a big change of, of K from K J to K equals zero. So basically what is happening here, and this is the symbol of, uh, of uh, Winnie the Pooh, is at the beginning, we were in the ground state. We were in the ground state, the psi initial, Winnie the Pooh could, could go through the hole very easily, but then he ate a lot, and then he changed the shape, or he changed whatever he was doing, you know, whatever his, his form, his wave function. So the wave function, the final wave function is much different to whatever he started with, and he cannot go through the hole. And then, we need the pool stuck for a long time until people can push him through until the angular momentum uh, go from here back to here, right? So this is the situation. The nucleus has suddenly changed the rotation. The wave function is totally different. Now this is the final and this is the initial here. And this is the same thing as we see in the we need the pool picture right there. So this is a, a, a funny symbol for you to remember. The nucleus has changed whatever it was doing, has changed the shape and has changed the orientation of rotation, basically. And that takes time for the nucleus to uh, go back to the uh, ground state because it has to do something else. And, I got, and now the overlap between this wave function and this wave function is very small. Before we have that this wave function, remember when I told you the, the six plus uh, E2, uh, four plus, the, it was quite large, the overlap between the two wave function because the nucleus was doing the same thing. The nucleus is doing the same thing here for these states. However, the overlap between this state and this one, where it, the excite it goes to, is going to be very small, and that's why this state is going to live long, right? This one is going to live long, and that's the name of isomer, right? As I say in the in the lecture notes, we have all information about the isomers, and I would I like you to read through the you know this uh, these k isomers here, but the purpose of today's exercise is to go back to this picture and see and see that we have two particles remember we counted up to 74 the nucleus is doing the same thing uh, we can go back down but it will be too much right so you just count yourself two 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 you know this is what we did before right so up to 74 but now the last two the last two here are the ones which are going to be easy, easier to be broken because remember that going down, going down, uh, the binding energy increases, right? Binding energy increases going down. So these guys are the less bound uh, pair. So it's easier to break this pair than these guys here, for instance. So then this guy is broken because we are exciting the nucleus. And this guy goes up there, right? So what is happening then? The nucleus is now doing something else. And this is the, the message I want you to, to understand. We have broken a pair of particles before everyone was happily rotating around, ground state band, rotating. Now the nucleus has changed. And this intrinsic configuration with this call is going to change the, the whole behavior of the nucleus, the whole rotation. And now, we need to see that this guy was seven and a half positive, right? Solid line. And the particles which went up goes here, which is nine and a half negative, right? Because it's a dashed line. So nine and a half negative and seven and a half positive, what is it? Hmm? It's eight, right? 
and we multiply the the parities positive and negative is negative so now we go back to our uh our guy here our NMDC and you have this isomer which is the the matter of at hand this guy here which is an isomer and has an eight minus right eight minus corresponds exactly to the uh, picture that we just brought here a pair of particles going up there and one particle staying down here. So if you look at things around, there are not so many options, you know, because you can have a, it, it say we move the line here. Also actually give you an indication, actually what is the actual deformation of CN128 for that particular state, because we can again move this line and say, good, let's go here. And here we also have a seven half, you know, if we count up, uh, we count 72 here, and then the two, the two last particles will be here, actually, on this guy. But that is on a dashed line, which is negative, right? So to make, right, then these two guys will come here, then the 74 will be like this. If we move the deformation a little bit to the left, it will be like this. Right, and these guys, you know, there's a lot of guys here. Actually, one, two, three, but there will be six particles in this and this orbital. They don't cross each other, although you can see those. So basically, you will have two particles here on a seven half negative parity. And you know, if you look up there, there's nothing, there's no nine half, the only nine half is negative, right? So you cannot promote this guy anywhere here. This is the only thing, it's a three half. So that will be a possibility for three half, uh, three half negative, or actually three half positive, and seven half negative, that will give us five negative, right? And if we look at the level scheme, uh, we see a five negative, Let me see where six negative here, a five negative here, which is a six nanoseconds, less than six nanoseconds, which, you know, it may also be a candidate. And, you know, but the, 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 the longest one, the longest isomer, this particular shape for this nucleus is this eight minus, which has 83 nanosecond, nanoseconds. And this guy um, is clearly, happening when this thing moved there and we have the situation before where you have one particle here on the seven half positive and the other particle went up there to the nine half negative you see there are not so many possibilities so it's easy for you to identify what is happening right these two particles will move here close to the always to the line of uh, the formation, right? Guys, is this clear now? Do I see? Can you hear? Can you see this? Yes, please. Can you shoot it? Is this clear? Bro, it is clear. It's clear. It just, it's just very, it's just playing, playing games here. Just, just you know, you see the orbitals. It looks complicated. But if you look around here and you put all the particles, that way we move all the particles up to 74. The only way, the only thing which is a little bit complicated, but it's not because it's just adding tools, right? So you just stick to, stick to it. And even if you don't count right, even if you don't count right, you know, you know that when you are up there, the only way that things may happen is when we move the line here, right? Here or, you know, between here and here, you will get the same, the same answer, right? So the nucleus will have a, a, a shape, a quadruple, a quadruple shape, which will be something like this. So if we move here, for instance, here, then we have this dashed line coming down. 
and this will be our our 74 you see this guy coming down will be our 74 so then that will change again because this is a one half so if we measure this is how things work we measure we measure a isomeric state a winnie the pool eating too much honey of eight minus this eight minus has also a projection on of the j on the k uh, on the on the on the z axis of the same amount so j is equal to eight the two uh, particles align perpendicular to the symmetry axis in this case so then this is the story then the angular momentum has to change the k quantum number has to change that's why they have to they are called k isomers from k equal to eight to k equal to zero because that's the k quantum number of the ground state everyone everything wants to wants to go back to the minimum energy it's a principle of nature everyone wants to go back to the minimum energy and this is provided by the ground state band in this particular case it goes down to the zero energy which we know is there's no zero energy but to the principle to the minimum energy given by the binding energy of the nucleus which is always for the ground state so but to do so it has to, to change orientation the wave function is changing quite dramatically because the nucleus is now doing something else and in such a way it takes time for aligning the k quantum number from k equal to eight to k equal to zero huh? questions Right. Uh, Prof. Tell me. Can we do another example for refinement purposes? Uh, guys. I want you to, I, yesterday I told you, this is your job to find other examples. We can go to have me 178. We can go to, you can check, uh, let me see, 136, uh, 130 barium, 136 samarium, for instance. Uh, let's see what happened here. Uh, 136 samarium, barium. <laughs> This is why I want you to explore uh, accurate shot of nucleides. I want you to explore yourself in the A and the C. Six, let's see what we have here. So if we follow the, the, the rule that, you know, of as a spin symmetry and you know in this case for instance these guys may have uh, a similar structures all these guys because they have all the same number of uh, neutrons so 128 is one of them but then we can try barium 130 cd 132 now dbm 134 or we can even go farther Uh, Adimium 152, Samiri, uh, what was that? Now I stop here. I want to go to the previous view. Uh -huh. Adimium 134, uh, Adimium 144, then I want Samiri 146. That was correct. So Samiri 146, for instance. Uh, we go here, select all, uh, 136 samarium. Remember that we can also go to the, to the, to the chart and see what is happening there.
Well, anyway, we already have this guy here. So let's get this guy. So then we look at this guy and look at this. This is even more surprising because this guy is leaving for eight minus again. He's leaving for 15 microseconds, you know, much longer. So remember 10 to the nine, 10 to the, 10 to the, so 10 to the minus 12 is picoseconds, 10 to the minus nine is nanoseconds. This is 10 to the minus six, right? So now we are talking about uh, quite a long lifetime for another eight minus uh, nucleus, right? But this guy will be the same as we have already here. Because this guy will have also 74. I just give you giving you another example because the medium 140, 144. If we go to the charge of nuclei, and we go here to the previous one. I just use a little bit of my knowledge on on on, on assuming that these guys may look similar and actually they look similar, right? So 128, if we go up in the same line of having the same number of neutrons, 74, 74, 74, 74, nadimium 134. Let's look at nadimium 134. Let's look here, nadimium 134. Uh, down here. Nadimium, what is it? Here we go. One more here. All right, so we go to Nadimium 134, uh, list of levels. And we check what is happening here again. Eight minus, another eight minus with 410 microseconds, right? So compare this lifetime, picoseconds, picoseconds, picose picoseconds. Uh, we also have femtoseconds many times, you know. But now we have a, a state which is actually outstanding in terms of how long it how long it lives right look at the rest nothing happened similar 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 they may be they may belong to the same to the same uh, rotational band the nucleus is maybe doing the same thing but here we have a special case where another eight minus four thing what happened with uh, with this guy with nadimi 134 also has 74 neutrons, right? So the other day I mentioned Hafni 178. So this is the, the now is your, your, your time to go and draw your lines, you know, draw your lines and say, okay, I'm going to go up uh, and see, you know, I'm going to have a point to the formation and play yourself. This is now your turn to work out how to understand these things, right? I just giving you examples. And as again, as we said the other day, there is the case of you know the longest light and the longest isomer, which that's why I'm mentioning Hafni 178, but Hafni 178 is farther up there. Uh, platinum, uh, how's about here? It's a little down. Close, 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 close. Uh, gallium, half new, 178. Look what happened here. Half new, 178. Uh, we go a little bit down. Eight minus, four seconds. You see? Eight minus, the same thing, four seconds. Impressive. But even more impressive is this one. 31 years. You know, 31 years emitting gamma ray. You know, gamma rays, uh, a meta stable uh, state living for a half life of 31 years. 178 hafnium gamma ray laser. So, Gamma ray laser, you know, there are millions of dollars invested in building a laser, which is million of times more powerful than whatever we have. And this is again uh, a situation that's actually of this isomer, right? 
Hey. So this guy uh, here, uh, this guy here is doing the same thing. He's decaying, cascade. And then this guy is going to leave for four seconds. Up to, you know, it changed from the, again, the same thing, the same situation. K equal A to K equal zero. This is for the ground state. But there are another two particles. We are breaking now another pair and we are producing the 16 plus. Now, as we go up in energy, now this can be also two protons or two neutrons be, being broken. Actually, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of two protons and two neutrons. And I want you to go through Hafni 178, knowing that one, Hafni 178 is uh, 72, right? And 102, 106, actually. And go to the proton set 72 in the Nielsen diagram and go to N106. And I start building up, up to you reach around this number. And check, check what possibility can give you a 16 plus 31 years, right? 31 years emitting gamma rays. Obviously, it's a very, uh, a very interesting possibility. And uh, the longest isomer, not the longest actually, but it's, it's one of the, the, most, the most famous. Because it has to move. Now we have four particles. One, two, around three and four orbiting the nucleus. We have broken two pairs. And K is equal to 16. J is equal to K is equal to 16. So this guy has to go back. You go back to K equal to eight. But then again, it takes a lot of uh, effort for the nucleus to go back to a different K quantum number. That's why they are called K isomers. And this is why they live so long. And the idea was to produce this in uh, amount, sufficient amount, where the engineers can use this material, very exotic material of Hafni 178, at this metastable isomer, isomeric matter, right? So we, we build the matter, and then uh, the engineers can, can use that for building something very destructive, right? This is unfortunately some of the issues that happen when you have when you do science, you can do it for the benefit of humanity and develop uh, science for, for, for fusion energy, for instance, and having fusion energy to, to water, to remove the salt from the, from the ocean and water the Sahara desert, for instance, and have the Sahara grown with, uh, with whatever you want, tomatoes, mangoes, you know, anything you like. Or we can have this and invest lots of millions. But I tell you one thing. I was offered the job to make this, right? When I finished my PhD, I was offered the job, lots of money, lots of money to build this material, this exotic material that, you know, should certainly will be used for, for defense by the US. It was paid by the Department of Energy. And uh, just keep it secret, but I refused the job because obviously it has a, a strong implications. And uh, the job apparently didn't succeed. That's what I heard later. Because the idea was to feed this state somehow by using beta decay. Uh, we haven't gone through mu too much through beta decay. But the, the fact of the matter is that you, through beta decay, you need to feed this state, which is a very high energy, 2.447, right? Uh, if, we look, if, we look, if we go just out of curiosity, and we go here, see the uh, acro rate, sorry. And we go down 178, let me see. Almost there, look, 177, 178. The idea actually was to uh, produce that 
through the beta decay of, I'm going to tell you in a sec, here we go. Right, this is how the nuclei decay. And this is our guy of interest with half 178, uh, it is here, stable. So the idea was to go from this guy, from Lucini 178, and to feed the 16 plus, let me just actually bring it up here. You see, Luthini 178 feeding this state here, the 16 plus with 31 years to make a, a super laser. You know, lasers are, are in EV, you know, atomic lasers. Uh, here we are talking about MEV, right? Million electron volts, right? Or kilo electron volts. So the laser will be the very powerful tool. However, there was a little issue here. You know, to feed this 2.446, you need to have a Q value, which is more than this 2446. But to this to decay by beta minus, it only goes down, it goes below the 2446 and the Q value is 2. 099. So to feed this guy, the Q value of this reaction should be above this, this energy here. You know, like two, two, five, two, six, two, seven, you know. So the idea was that this guy decays to this fellow. And there were many, many millions of, uh, of dollars being invested, even when the possibility was very small, you know, because the beta decay uh, is not going to, is not going to feed this guy. Is going to feed guys underneath, right? So you can feed this guy, but then there's no time. There's no four seconds is not uh, probably enough to have this uh, cascade of coherent light. All right, guys, with this story of the gamma ray laser, we are going to finish. We're going to finish here and uh, you can explore uh, and see, you know. There's a lot of information, uh, isomeric states, physics today. Actually, this is a nice, a nice one. Star Wars, you see, to the take up of a possible half in isomer gamma ray lasers, gamma ray lasers surface in Star Wars. So unauthorized, but you know, there are this gamma ray laser. Tell me. How do you know like which which Nelson diagram to use? Good. The complicated one. So you go to the Nielsen diagram. Uh, here you will have for neutrons and protons. We use that this one here for uh, neutrons. Okay. You can use the this one for neutrons, but uh, they are very similar actually. Or well, this one is also for neutrons. If you continue here, this also for neutrons. But then uh, for neutrons it depends. So uh, you know. Uh, this one is very complicated also for neutrons when, when you have lots of neutrons, but I we won't go through this one. This one is a little bit too complicated for us. This one okay. too, right? So we go through maximum up to 82, right? Actually, no, because we need the 100 something, a little bit 100 something maybe for the, for the, a little bit below here, below this one. For the, uh, let me see, for the for the hafnium, we we'll need ah, ah we need something like th that this here also. because in the hafnium, remember we have uh, seventy two and one or six so the one or six will be the maximum number around that the maximum number we're, that we are going to go and that will be for neutrons right then after the neutrons if you I'm zooming zoom out here after the neutrons comes the uh, the protons. Uh, you will see here now is for, for protons, right? But you see that the for protons is very similar. This structure is quite similar. Remember that for protons, the only thing is that protons are less bound because they are repelling each other. So the building will move up, right? As you go deeper, you have more binding and the neutrons will be more bound in the in the in respect with you know more binding energy with respect to the protons, right? But the structure will be very similar. But underneath here, you have all the Nissan diagram for protons, right? In any case, I will send them to you in the, in the test 
So the, the, the way to do now is to start playing. You have the Nielsen diagram uh, yourself. I send them to you. So you go and try. The best thing is to try to find that 16 plus isomer, these 31 uh, years uh, isomer, which has been uh, so famous and so many, uh, so much money has been invested. And hopefully for nothing, for because uh, once this is, uh, if anyone gets this very exotic, very rich matter, then they can make the the, the gamma ray laser, right? So this hopefully was not successful. That's what I heard last time. And as you can see from the laws of uh, beta decay, this cannot happen because the Q value for the reaction is has a smaller energy than the 16 plus itself. The 16 plus has uh, 2.6 or 2.4, and the uh, and the beta decay, the Q value is 2.0, right? So there's a you cannot populate something which where you don't have energy for that, right? So guys, Manfred. I like uh, Suma. Suma, how is how is Mandela going? In fundo. That's good. <laughs> I like that. I like that. And in Shuti, you are being very quiet today. Did you understand things? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good, sir. Today it was very cool. You explain everything like the way I want to, so I couldn't say nothing. Go through the video because it's, it's tough. You know, it's, it's difficult for me to explain these things because you know the diagram looks mm. very complicated, right? But so it so it means like to find the 16 plus isomer, we need to look the the nucleus which is above maybe 82 or no. You you need to go to 72. You you count up for protons. Okay. And you go up for neutrons, right? You go for 72 for protons and for 72 because as a spin symmetry, because we have the same, almost the same number as, as for Sino 128, 74, right? Mm. You will have a, a, a similar, you know, the eight minus in half me 178. In fact, this eight, these four seconds that we mentioned before is the same kind of configuration. However, in, 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 the, in the case of the, now we have four particles, not only one pair has been broken. So you need to find out which one, which other pair is being broken, right? See, so I think the, the pair we need to, bro to broke up is the one is far closer to magic number, right? In this case, no, because as we go up in energy, the, this rule doesn't, ha doesn't, doesn't work so, so well, because now, we are giving more energy for, for overcoming this, this magic number thing, right? So now we're going to have, you have to check if it's uh, what kind of four particles can give you 16 plus, right? So we found two particles which give you uh, eight minus. So we have, we needed a seven and a half uh, solid line and a nine and a half dash line to give you eight minus. So in this case, we need to, whatever combination you multiply the, the parities of the pair and the total parity also must be positive because this uh, this uh, this famous uh, uh, long leaf uh, isomer 31 years you know has a 16 plus right so the total combination of the four particles must give you 16 plus oh okay 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 now i understand what to do AC, hey, are you are you good there? Goku, I, I never heard you. I, I haven't seen you or heard you heard from you for a long time. Are you are you good? Good professor. Good. Did you understand today's lecture? Yes. So today's lecture was difficult to explain because there's a lot of things, but you know I'm going to be very proud if, uh, and you're going to be very proud of yourself, if out of these crazy diagrams, you know, because these are these are not easy to, to understand, right? You know, these are not easy to understand all these things. You know, when you see this thing, you get scared. You know, you you get the, you know it's, this is impossible. You know, but we manage to understand why these lines go up and down. You know, sometimes you have this bending here is because they cannot uh, cross. You know, we haven't explained things in, in more detail. 
but we have explained the gross features. For instance, guys, very important. If I say from five to five to six, what is the energy difference here? From five to five to six. So if we have a, a I want to give you this one for the last, because this is also important to understand. So if we have uh, the vertical line, you know, the Y axis is the binding energy or the, exc or the excitation energy. Uh, and here we have, let's say the energy goes in units of H bar omega, right? We say an H bar omega is equal to 41A to the minus one third Fermi, uh, MeV, right? So we have a vertical line and we have that 5.5 here and here we have six. So obviously for Hapni 178, if we are dealing with Hapni 178, this will be, uh, the difference here is 0.5, right? 0.5 times 41 times 178 to the minus one third, for, uh, again, for me, MEV. Right? This is the energy here. Is that clear? So then you have a, an idea if you have this yes, particle. Yeah. If you have this particle here, the seven half, as mentioned before, there was a pair, and this particle one, one here moved up there. And we have actually dashed line because this was a, a negative. Uh, a negative thing and this particle went there so this difference you know what this difference is the energy needed for this particle to go that, that up there right so then you can see also what is the the energy required from going from the nine half uh, seven half uh, pl uh, plus to the seven nine half minus right solid plus dash line minus so then if you calculate, because you have the y-axis here, whatever this is, right? You will say, okay, this is 5.4, this is 5.5. So there's a difference of 0.1, right? This is 0.1 here. When you look at the y-axis, so that will be 0.1 times, again, that's the energy required according to this model. 0.1 times, you know, 41 times 178 to the minus one third. Depending on the nucleus, when we did 21 neon, then obviously it will be different, right? It will be whatever energy gap between this and this, you know, whatever is the gap, you check always on the y-axis. This is 0.2. Then 0.2 for neon 21, obviously will be times 41 times uh, 20 to the minus one third MeV, right? This was the case that we did before. For half 178, so as you know, this energy depends on A here, right? So you know what is the energy also required to uh, excite a, a break a pair and excite a nucleus because you can compare with the NNDC and you see the energy that is required to make this uh, the two minus, right? Or the eight, the eight minus. The eight minus you need 1.14 MeV, right? To make the 16 plus you need 2.4 MeV. And this will be the, the related, this will be related to the, uh, the distance between these, these guys, right? If this distance, you know, this distance goes like, like closer, obviously the, the, the deformation will be likely here if the, distance, if the energy is smaller. So you will be somewhere here. And if the energy is bigger, you will be somewhere here, right? So that's where your vertical line also can move to the left or to the right, and you will have an indication of what is the deformation of the nucleus. So that's why I want you to play fully with this Nielsen diagram. And we are not understanding 100% the Nielsen diagram, but we are understanding the, the, the gross fissures. And um, we know that what is most likely the deformation of a nucleus, because when we look at the different combinations, at the different configurations to make that isomer that has been measured with eight minus or with 16 plus has been measured. So we know exactly 
what uh, particles are involved. Okay, because not everything, you know, not everything can give you an eight minus as we just saw before, or not everything can give you a sixteen plus. There are other kind of isomers, guys. Six six minus six plus, you know, and this is just a, an example of these guys, famous ones, because it encompasses the possibility also to see similar structures when you have the same number of uh, the same number of neutrons for this N seventy four line that we we just check. But also when you have the same number of protons and neutrons, so we can go to Hafni 178, which has a similar number of uh, protons than 128 Cino has neutrons, right? Uh, in such a way, uh, we see also that this symmetry, and this is what the, the outcome of this exercise, I want you to write down in, in, the, in the exam. You know, I want you to write down that you understood isospin symmetry and that we can take 70 two protons or 74 neutrons and we may have similar phenomena similar excitations okay with that and uh 50 rands you can go and buy a salumi in the in the barn the barn the barn is not open anymore no so Hopefully, i have so i have a question tell me Okay, so now you give us example according to this question you, you show us. So there is uh, energy from 5.4 and 5.5. So the, um, the difference is 0, 0,1. So right. maybe using... So you, you go here, right? Yeah. You go here yeah. and check the difference. You see, here, there's a difference of from... Let's go here. Here is 5.6, 5.6, 5.7, 5.8, 5.9, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5
Okay, okay. So these guys oh, may also be breaking a pair. No. You can break a pair here, something, you know, it can be around the, the stick and be doing the same thing. But here, the nucleus is just breaking a pair and also is moving one, one particle, one proton, or one neutron is moving up there, uh, as we just saw in the Nielsen diagram, right? So this requires lots of uh, going through this calmly. Yesterday, we explained what all these uh, up and downs according to the short range of the nuclear force, why this seven half goes up there, right? Whereas the one half comes down here, you see? So this is a very important concept for us to understand because this is, again, the essentials of nuclear physics, the short range of the nuclear force charge independence of the nuclear force. I want us to, with, this, with the concept that we have gone through, I want us to make conclusions. And for this, we need to practice a lot. Just trust me, you take the Nielsen diagram that you have, and you just have the initiative. It's very important to have the initiative to try yourself anything, you know, and say, okay, where are these isomers? Let's see whether there's any other isomer in so if we go again to have new 178 uh, or to, I don't know whether we put the have new 178, but uh, actually here, we go here and we see the list of level, right? Uh, oh, I don't know, doesn't like it. Uh, list of levels. Yeah, now it's there. So picoseconds, 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 picoseconds here, well, boom. Microseconds, eight minus. It was for uh, 134. Let's see, picosecond, 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 picosecond. Everything is picoseconds. Okay. Fine. We can explain this guy, the eight minus, because it's breaking two particles, one, two neutrons at 74, right? Easy. But now let's go and say, okay, let's go to the, uh, I want to go here, to the 178 uh, half minute. So picoseconds, 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 nanoseconds, long, it's long, six plus. So this must come again from breaking to uh, a pair of particles. So what is the six plus? Anything which is much longer than picoseconds, you know, like 77 nanoseconds is an isomer. So this six plus must also be a combination of two particles. So these are the things that you need to know. I'm not going to tell you more because this you are the one who is going to explore this. We must be able to explore. If you want to do science, we are not going to be limiting ourselves to a trip to Cape Town and come back. We go a trip to Cape Town, we get lost, we go to, to find this Indian place, we have had lots of food, we figure out what they have there, we eat there, then we go somewhere else and we look at the at the Seco Museum. You know, we explore. This is what we do in, in, in life. If you, are, if you want to have a full life, we explore. We just don't go there. Okay, we have, we have been here in Cape Town. We saw this tower here, the APSA bank, whatever nonsense. Boom, let's go back home. We go, when we go to places, we investigate, we explore. That's our job in physics. So this is why you're going to do it. And by this Friday, I hope that you have, uh, you have uh, worked out yourself. You have put a vertical line counting up, up to the, the point where you count up to the number of protons, the number of neutrons, see which particles can be broken, because there's, there, uh, I tell you, there are very few possibilities, and this is the beauty of it. You cannot have too many possibilities. Uh, if you have too many possibilities, something must be fishy, you know? So this is a research, this is an investigation, and I see you on uh, Friday. Okay, guys, now I have to prepare the presentation for, for tomorrow. Good, then in shooting, are you okay? Manfred, say something, I haven't heard you. Yeah, I'm good, time. say, I'm good, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm planning doing good, like, you know, uh, so trying. Practicing, practicing is, is what you see. You go yeah. here and see, okay, this guy is, is, what is happening with this six plus is actually, Strange. Why is living such a long leaf? You know, seventy. Anything longer than one nanosecond or five nanoseconds, actually, longer than five nanoseconds, is a long leaf. It's is strange. 
is normally happening because you break a pair of protons or a pair of neutrons. Okay. Okay. Uh, prof. So yep. now the test we're writing on Friday, what is it that it, it's going to cover? Everything. So you can study until today. You see, guys, uh, I, 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 I want to tell you one thing, guys. I don't like these kind of questions. It's going to cover even what was uh, covered in test one. No, 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 no. We, we can test this test, everything up to in the, since test two. So it will cover oh. shell model, whatever you have been doing with crack, uh, wave functions, okay. the deformed shell model. You know, it will cover all the things. Uh, maybe it may come with a question of isospin because we have been mentioning iso isospin as well here. Yes. So it's good to. So basically, isospin shell model and the form shell model will be mostly it. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Crystal clear. Mr. Suma, how is how is Mandela? Mandela <laughs> is it's good. Did you like singing the the Sosolosa the other day? He was the Sosolosa. Yeah, I thought the Sosolosa. Eh? The Sosolosa. We you were singing nicely there, guys. Have you seen the video? <laughs> Have you watched the video of the Sosolosa or not? Yeah, I saw the video. I know, Mr. Suma. But what about these guys? Luasi, did you watch the video? Luasi hasn't watched the video. <laughs> Guys, we need to we need to watch the videos. We need to get excited with the church okay, All since, right. Since and it should you watch no, it. Since there is no many people who watch it. Sorry, and it what did you say? You're saying since there are no many people who watch it, maybe you can uh, Play it again. Oh, but uh, I think uh, okay. Let's finish with the with the with the Sosolosa. But uh, but let's see what what the Sosolosa is. Let me see if I have it here. What is the Sosolosa? Uh, it is in the Fellowship of the of Unisulu. Uh, here we go, and then let's go here. I hope the video is somewhere here. Here we go. Downloading it. No, that one. Let me see this. I want to see this one. You see, the guy was far away, so we couldn't hear our voices, our strong voices. You know, hear this one. You know, this is also what I want you guys to enjoy life. We do things. Are you here? Can you hear or not? <laughs> this is Suma here. This is Suma. This is Mr. Suma here. And this is. 